Today I am sharing my Smart Art Box project for the month of November. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Just starting off, for transparency, this is a sponsored video. If you are unfamiliar with what the Smart Art Box is, each month they send you a new box full of full-size art supplies, everything you'll need to complete a project, including a brochure. This is, I think, is one of the most valuable parts of the box. You get a brochure that goes over the style, you've got project pointers, talks about what comes in the box and how best to use it, and then on the back, they walk you through step-by-step step how to use whatever medium that is. So if it's something you're totally new to, you're not gonna feel lost, it does break down exactly exactly how to use whatever came in that box. Let's go ahead and take a look at what came in this month's box. This box is huge this month. Not everything seems to want to fit. There's so much in there. So as always, at the top of the box, we have the section that goes over for how to enter for your chance to win a free box. We have the brochure that we have already gone over. A four ounce bottle of Deco Art Media Texture Sand Paste. A tube of gold relief outliner. I have never used anything like this. That's interesting. Three bottles of Deco Art Media Fluid Acrylics. We've got cobalt blue hue, red, and primary yellow. We have a pad of Cache Dowler and Rowney 101 Mixed Media Paper. These sheets are 108 pounds. They're nice and thick. And there are 60 sheets in there. We've got two black canvas boards and a paintbrush. Of all the things that came in that box, that gold liner was like the most intriguing to me. Super excited to see what happens there. So let's go ahead and take a look at my project. I did not expect this to work without having white paint, especially putting yellow up against a black canvas. So I actually did go and find some white from a previous Smart Art box that I was going to mix in with this if it didn't work. I didn't end up needing it though. This paint is very, very highly pigmented. And so while right now, yeah, you can see the black canvas through that yellow. If I used any of my regular yellow from my acrylics, how I normally paint, like the Liquitex Basics, the yellow wouldn't have shown up so much. Now I'll end up having to put a couple of coats to really get this to be opaque, but it did end up coming out opaque, which I didn't expect. So I was pretty happy with that that result. Now the paintbrush that came in this kit is teeny, teeny tiny. So this was one I did use a paintbrush from another Smart Art Box kit because that would have taken me forever to try to paint this with a little brush like that. It was actually a decent brush. I like the brush. I'm, I'm definitely going to keep it, but I was not going to take the time to try to get this look with the tiny, tiny brush. So I kind of cheated there, but it was from a previous Smart Art box. So that makes it okay, right? So what I've done, I started with a yellow and I'm letting my brush stroke show on this one. I started adding more and more red as I worked my way towards the outer edges of the canvas. So this is my sky here. And then the bottom section is supposed to be, I guess, grass. I don't know, I was making it up as I went along. I was just having fun. I love painting like this, where it's like, let's just see what happens. It is just one of the most enjoyable experiences. I love, love just the fun of not worrying about everything being perfect. Let's just see what happens with the paint. So I'm adding a second layer because I really want this to pop. Now that red was super opaque, much more so than the yellow. I was really impressed with how bright that red came out. Red and yellow, those are typically fairly translucent colors most of the time with acrylics in here. They were much, much more opaque than I expected. This was much more like the Liquitex soft bodied acrylics where they're just, there's so much pigment in the paint versus working with the Liquitex basics, which tend to be more translucent. So I did end up adding a little bit of blue to the red for that outer edge. That's where that darker burgundy color came in. I dried that and now I'm coming right on top with more yellow yellow with a little bit of red to get the orange, but I definitely want to lighten this up in the center because I don't like the look of the black canvas showing through the yellow there. Again, just making sure my brush strokes are showing. I'm working my brush in sort of little half, I don't want to say half circles. They're slightly curved. These are not just perfectly straight lines. Even with the grass, they're all slightly, slightly curved. I do change the direction a little bit in the sky versus the grass. Pulling more yellow making sure that all of that background or the black canvas is covered there. Unlike how I usually work with acrylics, I did not need to use any water to thin these out. I was able to use the paint straight. They were a really nice consistency. As I start to blend, I start getting more of the wet into wet look here with the oranges into the darker reds. And pulling out some highlights there.
letting the paint be a little bit chunky. I'm not worried about smoothing everything out or even taking a mop brush or anything like that. I do want my brush strokes to show. The darker color there is my red mixed in with some of the blue so that I get that deep plum color. I've got a little bit more red than I do blue. That's why it leans more towards that kind of brick red, that deep red color versus just being purple. After this, I'm going to take that molding paste that it came with. It's this gritty sort of sand-like paste, and I'm going to mix the red and the blue in with it. I started by mixing the red and the blue in just a separate disposable bowl type thing. I mixed my deep, deep plum type color, again, similar to what I used for the darkest portions here, but I mixed it and then I took some of that mixture and mixed it into a separate section that I had that molding paste in. I keep saying molding paste, it's actually the textured sand paste. But what I've done is create this sandy, sandy mixture of thick paint. Then I'm using the little brush that did come in the kit, so that brush did get some use. This textured sand paste is really cool. You can do a lot with it. it. If you were creating a beach scene, you could create your sand with this. I think it would have a really neat look. It also says on the jar that you can use it with stencils so that you have that textured stencil background and you know me and stencils. So I think that would also be a really cool way to use this product. But I really had fun with this because it, it flowed smoothly. I would have thought that it'd be too thick and chunky, but with mixing it with the paint, it thinned it out enough that it painted on very, very smoothly. You can see I can get a lot of detail with this, which I definitely never would have thought would be the case because it's thick, but when you thin it down with some of the paint, it flows so nicely. The thing is with this is that you want to make sure you're using a very highly pigmented paint so that this works well. If you used something like the Liquitex Basics that I normally paint with would not be a product I would use with this because they aren't as pigmented. I love them for how I normally paint with acrylics, but for something like this where you're mixing it in, you're going to need something that is that very, very highly pigmented paint. So as you've seen me do with the Liquitex Pouring Medium where I'm using the Liquitex Soft Body Paints versus the Basics, again here it's a very similar concept where you just want something that's more highly pigmented to mix in with the sand paste. It almost has a shiny look to it. It just looked so pretty. I've never used this stuff before and I can definitely see when doing mixed media, this would probably be one of the things that I would want to include in my work in the future. Not that I do mixed media that often, but this is definitely a really, really cool product. I've come back through and added some of this into the grassy area as well. Just a few little splashes of color here and there. This gold pen thing was my favorite part. Now my hand, I had a really hard time keeping it steady, working upright like this. I'd recommend doing this flat on a table. I think it would be much, much easier to keep a steady hand. But I came back through with a paintbrush and just smudged out, softened out wherever I was not so steady. But I just lined portions of this with this gold. And this gold is so opaque. It stood out against everything. It looked so pretty. You can see with that paintbrush, I'm able to just smooth that out, but you can still see it. It's really, really bold. Following those swirls with this. This was definitely, I think, one of my favorite of the Smart Art Boxes that I've had. I had so much fun doing this, and I am absolutely in love with both that gold paint gel stuff, whatever I'm using here, and that sand paste. Those were both really, really cool products to work with. suspected that gold liner is kind of my favorite thing and now I'm like what else can I put that on that was just really really fun if you are interested in signing up for the smart art box I do have links below in the video description along with a coupon code that will give you a discount off of your subscription for life 
thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, our Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. Also, I'm now doing live streams most Wednesdays, so if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on.